We're gonna start today's class in child's pose. So if you're seated on the mat like me, feel free to turn to face either short edge of the mat, scoot towards the back. We're gonna bring our toe mounds to touch, bring our knees a little bit wider than our, than our feet and begin to sink your hips back. And you may feel already a stretch here in your quadriceps if you're feeling a little tight. Um, so feel free to kind of shift your weight forward if this is uncomfortable. Otherwise, keep sinking those hips down and keeping your hips down, see if you can begin to walk your hands forward towards child's pose, allowing your forehead to come down to the mat. As you get settled into child's pose, breathe deep through both of your side bodies. One more full breath in. Then exhale, walk your hands over towards the left. You can even bring your right palm to rest on the back of your left hand. Inhale, walk back through center. And exhale, take it to the opposite side, breathing into your left rib cage. Inhale back through center. Maybe take one more really great stretch here. Maybe lifting off of your palms. And then as you're ready, begin to walk those hands back, lifting your chest. We're gonna make our way into everyone's favorite toe stretch. So bring those knees back. You can almost bring them to touch if it feels good or just under your hips. Then tuck your toes. Your pinky toes may need a little bit of extra help if you wanna reach back and tuck those. And then slowly begin to sink those hips back or those um, yeah, hips back over our heels as we did to set it for child's pose. We're gonna be here for a handful of breaths, nothing crazy, but if you're finding this very, very, very uncomfortable, feel free to walk your hands forward. The farther you bring your hands forward, the less weight is gonna be in your heels and the less of a stretch you're gonna feel through those feet. Oftentimes as runners, when we're finishing out of practice, we think about stretching those big muscle groups, our quadriceps, our hamstrings, our hips. If we remember to stretch, or even feel like it after a long workout or a long run. But let's not forget our feet and our ankles because they're our base, our foundation. Keeping strong arches, strong ankle mobility, and um, with good ankle mobility and strength. Everything else up that kinetic chain is gonna kind of build off of that. So take one more breath in. And on your exhale, slowly begin to come out of this posture. Rock on up to the tippiest of your tiptoes. And then exhale, allow the tops of your feet to come down onto the mat. From here, you can stay and maybe tap your tops of your feet onto the mat. Or if you'd like a little bit of a counter stretch, this is an instance where a counter stretch might feel good. Walk those hands back and we'll stretch through the fronts of those ankles. So maybe we stay here with our hips over um, our heels. Maybe we reach backwards. You could even play with lifting your knees off of the mat. If you wanna incorporate a little balance work, you can bring your hands towards your chest. If that doesn't feel good, bring those hands back down. Just take one more full breath in. Exhale, release. Make your way to tabletop. Shoulders stack over the wrists, hips over the knees. Toes could be tucked or untucked, whatever feels good after that last toe stretch. Feel free to roll with it. We're gonna make our way into cat cow. And so inhale, lift those sitting bones. And as your belly drops, pull your shoulders back, gaze lift. Feel that widening between your collarbones. We'll take a breath or two here. Exhale, begin to round through your spine. Press away from the mat to pull your shoulder blades away from each other. 
and then flow with your breath, inhaling to cow and exhaling to cat. Go through each one one more time. So one more cycle through cow and cat. And then come back to a neutral spine. From here, I invite you, you may wanna scoot forward if you need some more space. Extend your right leg back, tuck those toes, and just send your heel back and forward. We're kind of just rocking forward and back here, inviting a little bit of a stretch into your calf. You may even still feel some leftover sensation from that toe stretch as you kind of rock back and forth here. Okay, release that knee back to center. Take it to the other side. So send that left foot back. And as you get settled, begin to rock forward, begin to rock backward, stretching through that calf muscle. One more time. And then come back to tabletop. From here, let's get into those hips. So begin to scoop your belly button up towards your spine, almost like you're coming into cat pose, just to create a little bit of space to step your right foot through. And that step through can be tricky. If you can't step your foot through between your hands, don't worry, it's a challenging transition. Step your foot out to the side and then either use your right hand uh, to help you or just toe heel that foot in towards the center. And that can kind of help you get to the same spot as the rest of us. From here, send your hips forward and down. See if you can find a little bit of opening through that chest. Um, if you're feeling nice and open through that hip flexor, maybe we bring our hands towards the tops of our thighs. Or maybe we take this opportunity to open up through our chest so you could sweep your arms up and overhead. You could also, um, this is one of my favorite stretches, I interlock my fingers behind my back, palms to touch, then send those knuckles down and away as I roll my shoulders back. I usually try to find any opportunity to incorporate this into my practice. So if it feels good, feel free to take it now. One more breath in. Exhale, release those hands. We're gonna come into a half splits posture. So begin to send those hips back and you have two choices. You can stay here with your hips stacked over your left knee. If you do have a lot of flexibility, you can sink um, your weight all the way back, coming into almost like a half hero's pose, and then hinge forward. Again, that may not feel comfortable in your body. And you can stop here with your hips stacked about over that back knee, rock up, onto that right heel and you can hinge forward. If hinging just doesn't feel good, you can always rise up a little bit higher. You can keep as much of a bend in this knee as you need. So explore, find what feels good and send a lot of loving breath into that hamstring. Because for those of you that are here post run, you know our hamstrings get tight. My hamstrings are chronically tight. I stretch them and then I run and then I stretch them and then I run um, and it's just hard it's a it's a hard muscle group to really feel flexible with so protect your knee bend it as much as you need we'll just take one more full breath in exhale shift that weight back forward we're gonna plant our hands on the inside of that right foot and toe heel the foot to the outside edge of the mat, and then turn those toes, almost like you're what, like a windshield wiper, out about 45 degrees, allowing your knee to track in line with your foot. So your knee's gonna come out as well. And we're gonna come into lizard's pose. So you can stay right here, inviting those hips to send forward and down. If you have um, availability in your body, you could come down onto your forearms. Just check those hips. If you come down to the forearms and your hips kind of pop up like this, back on out of it. We wanna keep this sensation in those hips. 
If you would like a little more sensation, you can begin to rock onto the outside edge of your foot, lifting your heel. Um, and you can, from here, kind of press your right hand into that right thigh, opening up towards the right side of the room. If you'd like even more sensation, bring the sole of your foot back down. And then from here, plant your right hand right in front of you. And you can begin to bend into that left knee, maybe reaching back, stretching a little bit more deeply into those quadriceps. If you are reaching back, be mindful of those shoulders. It's really easy to keep this twist. See if you can keep those shoulders facing towards the front of the room. Again, this is just one option. We've gone through lots of options. So if this doesn't feel good, head on back to a place that feels right in your body. We'll take one more full breath in. Exhale, release wherever you are. Toe heel that foot back in. Make your way back to our hands and knees tabletop posture. Scoop your belly in and step your left foot through or out to the side and then guide it in so that you can come into our nice low lunge, keeping that back knee lowered. Take your time, find a little bit of a lift if you can. If your hips feeling super tight, this might be a good opportunity to grab a stack of books um, or position yourself in front of a low coffee table, maybe even a low table, um, like a bench or a stool could also be helpful. Yoga blocks, if you have them. If this feels good, you can take any type of chest opener that feels good. You could cactus your arms back maybe this time if it feels good. Or you can go back to our wonderful chest opener by sending those knuckles down and away from your back. One more full breath in. Exhale, release. Make your way into the half splits posture of your choice. So again, you can sink all the way back here finding this kind of like half hero's pose, half splits posture, and then, oh, my sock. This is what happens when you practice in socks. I love doing it, but they go all over the place. <laughs> and you can hinge forward from here. Or if that doesn't feel good, which I totally understand, just send those hips. Imagine sitting on the back wall. So we're lifting through those sitting bones, uh, rocking back on that left heel, and we're just slightly hinging at our hips. Imagine reaching your chest towards your big toe. And then you can always from there kind of find a gentle rounding in your back. Or you can keep a straight spine, whatever feels good in your body. One more full breath in. Exhale, send your weight forward, hands on the inside. Make your way to lizard pose. So once your foot gets to the outside of the mat, Windshield it wiper out for uh, windshield wiper it out 45 degrees. Send those hips forward and down. Again, if this is too much, find that lift so you can bring the ground a little higher to meet you. If that feels good, maybe hinge forward a little bit more, coming onto your forearms or further. If you can get your chest down to the ground, um, that's awesome. Go for it. Uh, just check in with those hips and make sure that they're still sinking down and we're keeping the sensation where we want, uh, where we want to feel it. Remember your options. You can stay here. You can rock onto the outside of that left foot. Press gently, very gently into that left inner thigh to open up. Sometimes this twist feels good as well. Or if you're feeling like your quadriceps need a little bit of extra support, you can come on back down. You could even bring your foot in a little bit closer if it feels good. And then grab that back left foot and send, uh, keep sending those hips forward and down. If you want to do a quadricep stretch, but you just cannot reach your foot, grab a strap. Uh, a yoga strap works well, even a winter scarf. Um, a bathroom hand towel or even a belt and you can kind of create a loop around your foot that you can hold on to the other side to pull that foot up a little bit towards you. It just gives your arm a little bit of extra length 
if it needs it today. And some days it does, even for me, some days um, I can get, I use all the props I can get my hands on. One more full breath in. Exhale, release that foot, step it on in, send it back to hands and knees. We're gonna come into a revolved child's pose. So bring your toes to touch. You can keep your knees narrow or maybe widen them just a smidge. And then inhale, open up to the right side wall. Send your fingertips up towards the sky, gaze past them. Exhale, thread the needle. So send that right hand between the space that your left arm and left knee create. Drop that shoulder. And then take the option that feels best for you. So maybe you stay right here with your left hand. Maybe you extend your left arm long. Or maybe you reach your left arm up, taking a little bit more of a twist, sending um, your left fingertips towards your left outer hip, maybe even rolling a little bit onto the back of your right shoulder to feel a nice twist in your spine. On your next exhale, plant that left hand under the left shoulder, and then inhale, open up all the way back, fingertips up towards the sky, exhale, release. Let's take it to the other side. Inhale, open up towards the left side of the room. Exhale, thread the needle. Plant your left shoulder. Find the option that feels good for you. Maybe that right hand stays under the shoulder. Maybe you extend that arm overhead. Maybe you take a bind, roll onto the back of that left shoulder and really um, embrace this twist. One more full breath in. Exhale, plant that right hand. Inhale, unwind. Open back up one last time. Exhale, release. From here, widen those knees as much as you'd like. Send those hips back. And we'll make our way to our last posture, which is where we started, in child's pose. Now I invite you to stay in child's pose as long as it feels good. You can keep pressing through those palms to send those hips down and back a little further. And then if you'd like, make your way to the Shavasana of your choice. I hope you guys enjoyed this practice. Come back anytime. Have a great rest of your day. Namaste.